introduce uh, Dr. Rogers uh, this morning. I'm sure you've read his bio, but uh, just to review, he's a physical medicine and rehab physician and founder of the San Diego Orthopedic Logics Medical Group. What isn't in his um, uh, bio is that he developed an interest in sports medicine in 1984 while he was an athletic trainer for the UCLA athletic department. And at the same time, he was obtaining his bachelor degrees in biology and kinesiology. Then he went on to get his medical degree from St. Louis University in 1993 and served as chief resident at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio, Texas. In 2008, he developed an interest in the emerging field of regenerative medicine, which he's going to talk to you about today. And he's um, widely recognized and does a lot of speaking um, in that uh, field. So I also have to tell you that uh, he has saved me from having uh, major surgery. I had a separated shoulder and uh, major tears and rotator in my rotator cuff and so forth. I went to see him at the suggestion of Kate Grace. Consequently, I have not had any surgery, uh, which I'm very grateful for. So he's one of my heroes. And uh, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Dr. Chris Rogers. Thank you very much, Diane, for that introduction. I do appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here and share some of the exciting work that's happening here in San Diego. So I, I don't know if you're aware, but San Diego has a very rich history in stem cell research and stem cell therapy. And so I'm going to review some of that with you, as well as um, some of the research we are do uh, new research that we're doing, the state of the art, as well as some of the new treatment options that we have available uh, in our clinic. Um, I'm one of those few lucky ones that's a San Diego native. I've spent most of my life here, uh, and it's just been um, a blessing, really. Uh, as Diane mentioned, um, I am board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation, which is a specialty in non-surgical orthopedics. And I'm fellowship trained in sports medicine and spine care. And I did develop my interest at UCLA, and I'm just going to give a little shout out to my Bruins, who are going to play tomorrow in the Final Four. So I don't know if there are any basketball fans out there, but we're really excited. The Bruins made it to the Final Four this year. Um, after chasing my education around the world, my wife and I decided to come back home. I took a job at UCSD in the Department of Orthopedics. I was the only non-surgical specialist in that group of orthopedic surgeons and had a fantastic experience, but really decided that private practice was more suited to my temperament, my interests. So eventually, uh, I founded the San Diego Orthobiologics Medical Group. And I'll explain later what orthobiologics are. I'm also medical director for a company called Personalized Stem Cells, Inc., which is a uh, sponsor of FDA-approved clinical trials in stem cell research. And we'll talk about some of the work we're doing. And then I'm very passionate about this new field of regenerative medicine. I'm on the board of directors for the American College of Regenerative Medicine, which is, was just formed uh, last year. And so I've had the privilege of serving in San Diegans for... Uh, 23 years, and I know this organization, this Rotary Club, is committed to service above self. I was uh, raised in a family where that was very important. My father actually was a Rotarian in San Diego for more than a decade, and in and I took the privilege of sharing his business card here. Uh, in tw in 2000, he was the president of the Rotary Club when he moved to Palm Springs, and at that point, uh, the Rotary International slogan was "Create awareness and take action." And so what I'd like to do is uh, create some awareness of what's going on in the stem cell universe and tell you the action that we're taking uh, to help bring these technologies to patients. Um, our family, is um, we're all animal lovers in our family. My dad was very involved uh, in the Citizens Committee with Dr. Anderson back in 1970, where uh, the voters got to vote on Proposition v B, which uh, approved a $6 million bond to build an 1,800-acre park, now the Wild Animal Park. And I, I think we can all argue that it's one of the gems of San Diego. So my dad was very proud to be involved in this program. As I mentioned, he loved animals, and he was passionate when he learned that um, China, the People's Republic of China, had developed a good relationship with the Nixon White House. And so he petitioned on behalf of the San Diego Zoo to bring the pandas to the zoo. And here are some Western Union telegrams that I found 
that he had that he had kept, where he argues that um, those pandas should come to San Diego because the San Diego Zoo is quote the best zoo in the world, which I think we can all agree. And I have some letters, I have several letters from the White House uh, responding to his telegrams, indicating that unfortunately the pandas were going to stay in Washington D.C. But my dad was very pleased when he persisted with several others, and uh, in 1996 we were able to bring uh, Shishi and Bayun, two pandas, two adult giant pandas, to the San Diego Zoo. As you know, these pandas have been the ambassador for the San Diego Zoo and for San Diego for two decades. Uh, and the first baby panda was born in captive that was born in captivity was here in San Diego. That was by May. And then she had four more siblings follow afterwards. So it's been a very successful research project uh, at the zoo. And it's also been a very important publicity project for San Diego. And the reason I'm talking about animals right now is because you need to realize that the first San Diegans, indeed the first Americans to re step, receive stem cell therapy were these animals. Uh, the first animal was a uh, sports performance horse in Ramona who received stem cell therapy for uh, a leg injury. Uh, many animals, pets, cats, and dogs have received stem cell therapy, uh, and including uh, more than 60 different exotic species at the zoo and wild animal park have received stem cell therapy as a result of this company, Vet Stem Biopharma. I don't know how many of you have heard of Vet Stem Biopharma, but there are more than 1,400 veterinarians nationally that administer stem cell therapy to animals using cells from their own fat tissue. And so uh, this company uh, has treated more than 20,000 animals. And uh, it was this research that allowed us to then venture into human studies. So Personalized Stem Cells Inc. is a subsidiary company of Vet Stem Biopharma, and it is the human division of this research company. And we are now conducting FDA approved clinical trials of stem cell therapy uh, for humans in orthopedics. And so uh, this allowed me the opportunity to do some really amazing things like collect stem cells from this, from Kokomo, who is a uh, endangered Western lowland gorilla who lives at the Wild Animal Park. If you've ever been to the Wild Animal Park, you know they have a great gorilla exhibit and you've seen Kokomo and uh, she's healthy, don't worry, she's fine. But she gets routine care, uh, you know, dental work and checkups and we took that opportunity to collect a little fat. And from that fat, we were able to grow stem cells in our lab. And those stem cells are waiting in the freezer should she ever need them, should she develop arthritis or any other medical condition that we think stem cells might be helpful. This is, I'm uh, seen here with Dr. Harmon, who is the CEO and founder of Vet Stem Biopharma, as well as the uh, founder of, um, of uh, Personalized Stem Cells, which uh, I'm the medical director for. Okay, well... This is actually my day job. I work at this clinic. This is where Diane met, uh, met me and had her treatments at San Diego Orthobiologics Medical Group. And we're, we're really happy with our clinic. It's a beautiful clinic. We love coming to work every day and helping San Diegans with their orthopedic problems. This is actually the most common thing we see, uh, knee osteoarthritis, right? So we're in San Diego. We love to be active. The weather's always great. And we like to be outside. And um, knee osteoarthritis is a huge problem. And it results in joint stiffness and swelling and pain and limited physical activity. Uh, it's actually a very common problem worldwide. In America, there are more than 27 million Americans with knee osteoarthritis. And worldwide, there are more than 650 million people who are suffering with knee osteoarthritis. And you can see that the United States uh, and Asia actually have very high prevalence of this condition. It's one of the most common orthopedic conditions uh, we treat. I want you to understand that knee osteoarthritis is not simply a wear and tear of cartilage. You'll hear this again and again from people that it's simply your cartilage wearing down, and that's not really the case at all. It is a chronic inflammatory disease of the entire joint. So the cartilage will be diseased and, and wear thin, but also the underlying bone becomes involved. The ligaments and tendons will become damaged. And the lining, there's a lining around the joint called the capsule, which has synovial tissue. And synovial tissue makes your synovial fluid, which nourishes and lubricates the cartilage. And that synovial fluid can become inflamed. The immune system can get out of control in the joint. And this is what creates the pain and swelling of knee osteoarthritis. And this is what you would see if you were an orthopedic surgeon looking inside the knee. 
On the left, you see a normal knee. You see the beautiful white cartilage on the thigh bone and on the shin bone with the meniscus sitting in the middle there. And on the right, a patient with osteoarthritis. You can see the cartilage has degenerated. It's worn thin. It's actually the, cartil the cartilage tissue is diseased and the bone is exposed. And this is what causes some of the pain with walking when you put pressure on that exposed bone. In the lower right, you see some red inflamed tissue that's called synovial tissue. And that, when that becomes inflamed, it causes swelling and pain in the joint. And this is obviously something that increases with age. So as we age, the cartilage cells no longer function properly and they have difficulty regenerating the cartilage. You're, you are regenerating tissues continuously throughout your life. Um, this is different than what I learned in med school. We were told cartilage doesn't grow. And I thought that never made sense because my knee meniscus when I was two is smaller than my knee meniscus when I was 22. So it didn't, it didn't make sense to me in medical school when they told us that cartilage can't grow. But the reality is all our tissues are continually renewing themselves. And uh, unfortunately, as we age, they lose some of that ability. And that's why osteoarthritis is more prevalent in uh, older age. And indeed, one in every three people over the age of 65 will have knee osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a serious disease. The, ortho the Osteoarthritis Research Society submitted a document, a white paper to the FDA in 2016, imploring the FDA to allocate more resources to osteoarthritis because it not only reduces mobility, but it's associated with increased risk of obesity, diabetes, hypertension. Uh, there's a higher risk of falls and fractures. And it's associated with an increased risk of heart disease. As you would imagine, if you can't exercise, you're, it's hard to stay healthy. And this is expected to increase as our population gets larger and as our population ages. And it's projected that by the year 2040, more than 78 million Americans will suffer with knee osteoarthritis. So this is a huge problem that we need to address. One of the ways it's been addressed is through knee replacement. And we see this projection of increasing need for knee replacement. And honestly, we don't have enough orthopedic surgeons to do the more than a million uh, to 10 million knee surgeries that are going to be required every year over the next 20 years. And frankly, Medicare can't afford to pay uh, for this huge cost. So we need alternatives. The most exciting alternative that I'm involved with, of course, is regenerative medicine, which is a new field of medicine, which is based on the premise that the body has the ability to heal itself. We've all had injuries. We've all had pain. Many of those have resolved themselves, fortunately, because the body is smart and knows how to heal itself. But of course, sometimes those mechanisms are impaired and they need a little boost. So if we understand how those mechanisms work when they're working well, we can apply it to the situations when they're not working well. And we do this now acting like farmers. I tell my patients, I'm now a farmer. So I'm trying to grow tissue. I'm trying to grow cartilage. I'm trying to grow tendon and ligaments. If I'm a gardener, I need seeds and fertilizer and soil. As a gardener, as a regenerative medicine doctor, my cells are seeds. My growth factors, these are, these are proteins and molecules that cells manufacture. That's our fertilizer. And then scaffolds to um, serve as the soil for those cells uh, to grow. Now, I told you the name of my company is San Diego Orthobiologics. And orthobiologics are simply treatments that are derived from cells or molecules that are produced by cells that we can use in orthopedics to treat orthopedic conditions. This is, this is a science that's been around for more than a decade, actually. The most common orthobiologic that you may have heard of is something called platelet-rich plasma, or PRP. And platelets are in your blood. They're cells in your blood that manufacture molecules that stimulate healing, decrease inflammation, and we can safely collect them from your own blood. We centrifuge them. That's what you're looking at there on the left. You see when we centrifuge your blood, the red cells, which are heavy with iron, they go to the bottom. The platelets in the middle there are concentrated, and we can extract those platelets and inject them into your tendon, into your joint, and um, they've been shown to be very effective. Uh, and if you'd like to read more about the science, uh, you can go to my website. I have many of these papers listed on our site. I just wanted to show you this busy slide, only to say that there are more than 30 randomized clinical trials showing that platelet-rich plasma is effective for knee arthritis, more effective than the cortisone injections that we're doing, more effective, more effective than the gel injections. You've heard about hyaluronic acid 
you know, the rooster comb shot, you know, Synvisc and others, uh, PRP in all 30 of those randomized clinical trials outperforms these other inject injections, which raises a question, why is insurance paying for those treatments and not for PRP? And this is something I think is going to change in the near future. I want you to understand that part of the problem right now with PRP is that there are many different ways to make it. So this is a study where a French orthopedic doctor donated his blood, you see it there on the left in the test tube, and then used eight different protocols to manufacture PRP. And you can see they all look very different. Some of them look like pineapple juice, and some of them look like a red Merlot. And, uh, the, and the reason they look different is because their content is different. Some of them have more red blood cells than others. Some of them have more platelets than others. So right now there's a real challenge in the industry standardizing uh, and quantifying what's actually in the PRP. In our clinic, we actually have a cell counter. Uh, this is Aisha, my medical assistant. She's probably done more PRP manufacturing than anybody in San Diego. She's been doing it for more than a decade. And uh, here you see her in a sterile hood in our lab, uh, collect, uh, preparing the PRP sample for a patient with knee arthritis. And that patient gets a generated report that lists what's actually in their PRP. And this is really not done in most clinics in San Diego. We're the, to my knowledge, we're the only clinic in San Diego who takes these extra steps, and it's critical that we do this. Uh, the reason I got into regenerative medicine is because of this fellow. This is Dave Phillips. He's a professional golf instructor. Uh, any golfers who watch the Golf Channel will recognize him. He's on the Golf Channel pretty regularly. He started a company called the Titles Performance Institute along with Greg Rose. And he came to me in 2007 and said, I have tennis elbow and I want PRP. And at that point, I had no idea what PRP was, but he knew about it because his athletes were going to Europe and getting PRP done. So I researched it, I uh, treated him, and I'm happy to say he's still doing very well. So I have Dave to thank for my foray into regenerative medicine. We do all our injections under guidance. We use either ultrasound, you can see on the left there a picture of a needle going into the knee joint right between the tendon and the bone. So the patient doesn't feel it, if we use ultrasound guidance, uh, so it makes it safer and more effective and also more comfortable for the patient. And on the right, you can see I'm injecting this, uh, that's actually my neighbor, I'm injecting his knee arthritis. And this is our facility, uh, again, our, in Carlsbad, where on the left you see the ultrasound machine, and on the right you see x-ray uh, fluoroscopy, which we use for our spine treatments. We also treat arthritis of the spine uh, and some other conditions, so we use x-ray for the spine. One other very important thing that we do in our office is uh, collect data on our patients. And it's one thing to say that your patients are doing great. It's another thing to say that there are published clinical trials, but it's yet an entirely different thing to actually track the outcomes of your own patients. And so uh, three years ago, two, two other physicians and myself realized that there was a need in the industry. And so we formed a company called Data Biologics. And Data Biologics is a software company that has a registry that physicians can use to track their patient outcomes. And so our patients download an app. Diane has done this. She downloads an app on her phone. And every three months, we pester her and ask her how she's doing. And so we can actually present this data anonymously to prospective patients and let them know what they might expect from these various biologic treatments. And so on the left, I just pulled up uh, some data from the last two years, pa uh, patients who had, had PRP in their knee, uh, 102 patients, average age 61. And you can see their pain scores are decreasing over the course of time. And so it gives you an idea of what you might expect from this treatment. And if you'd like to learn more about this company, we published a little um, annual report, which is available uh, on our website. It's very important for the field. We have more than 60 doctors uh, around the world using this right now. Uh, and it's, the, it's becoming the largest uh, registry in the world uh, for this kind of data. Okay, so this brings us to stem cells. This is what everybody's really interested in, I think. It's become a household word, word but I want you to understand that stem cell therapy uh, um, is extremely complicated. It's kind of like saying vegetables are good for you. There are many different kinds of vegetables, and there are many different kinds of stem cell therapy. So I'm just going to kind of give you a little primer. In, in high school, you learned about the human cell. You learned there was a nucleus with DNA, and you learned about all these different interesting parts of the cell. Um, I want you to know that there are 37 trillion cells in your body. I didn't count them, but the scientists have attempted to count them. 
And so you have these 37 trillion cells. I was trying to wrap my head around the number 37 trillion. So I figured, well, my hands are about, whoop, my hands are about one to two percent of my body weight. So that means there are more than 450 billion cells in my hands, which is more stars than there are in the Milky Way galaxy. So I think uh, it makes me very humble as a doctor to realize how complicated the human body is and how, how amazing we are. And it all started with this, your mom's fertilized egg. That single egg went on to become 37 trillion cells, which are you. After about one week, that fertilized egg became 150 embryonic stem cells. And those embryonic stem cells can become any cell in your body. You have more than 200 different types. You know, you have neurons, heart cells, etc. More than 200 different types of cells. That embryonic stem cell can become any of those cells. And this was some of the early excitement about embryonic stem cell research. Of course, there is problematic because the embryonic stem cells derive from an embryo. Fortunately, that embryonic stem cell will go on to differentiate into many different types of adult stem cells. So this, the adult stem cells can't turn into as many different types of cells, but they still can turn into many types of cells. For example, the hematopoietic stem cell, which was discovered in 1963 by Dr. Till and McCullough in Canada. Six years before that, Dr. Um, Thomas in New York had performed the first successful bone marrow transplant. They didn't even know why the transplants were working. All they knew is if they took bone marrow from a healthy donor, they could reconstitute the bone cells, uh, the blood cells, in a, in a sick leukemia or lymphoma patient. And so you see here the HSC, the hematopoietic stem cell, can turn into all the blood cells, including your red cells, your white cells, and your platelet cells. So you need those cells to keep renewing your blood. In orthopedics, we have something called the mesenchymal stem cell, and it was discovered by Dr. Kaplan in 1991, who's a friend of ours, and he proved that this cell can turn into bone cells, cartilage cells, muscle cells, and all the cells that an orthopedic doctor might be excited about. So if we have a patient with a fracture that won't heal, we were excited thinking that this mesenchymal stem cell could differentiate into bone by just transplanting the bone, and that indeed is true. We've since learned that this MSC is actually much more powerful than that. It is a little drugstore. It manufactures molecules in the body that reduce inflammation, modulate an overactive immune system. So it's good for decreasing inflammation and, and pain. It's good for protecting your cells. It's good for regenerating tissues. And it can renew itself. So Dr. Kaplan says these are not stem cells. They're better. And this is one of our patients. This is actually a, a professional soccer player who I treated uh, who had a knee injury, was unable to play soccer. He plays for the San Diego Soccers. And he had this large tear seen on ultrasound and I put some of his own cells from his fat into his tear. And you can see three months later, his tear is healed and he's back to playing professional soccer. And even though he's the oldest guy on the team, he's actually the fastest guy on the team now, which he likes to tell me about. Uh, this is looking inside the knee again. And you can see on the left, a patient who has severe knee arthritis. And you see the white cartilage, but you also see the areas where the cartilage has worn thin and the bone is showing on the end of the femur bone. And this is a patient, uh, this was actually a Korean study, South Korea, Dr. Ko, where cells from fat were injected into the joint. And you can see this patient has regenerated uh, their cartilage a year later. So these are some interesting pictures that show that we actually are doing what we think these cells are doing in patients. We are regenerating tissues. These cells live on your blood vessels and you have blood vessels everywhere in your body. And whenever you injure yourself, if you stub your toe, uh, those cells become activated, the MSC becomes activated, and starts the healing process. And so these MSCs have been found everywhere in the body, bone marrow, fat, umbilical cord, placenta. But as a doctor, we're really interested in recruiting and, and harvesting these cells from areas that are safe. So we recruit them primarily from uh, bone marrow. Uh, so we could do a simple procedure in the office. Patients tolerate this very well. We numb the back of the pelvis. We aspirate bone marrow. We process it in a device that's FDA compliant. And then in the, in the same day, we can administer those cells to injured tendons or injured joints. Uh, and Dr. Hernigau in France has been studying this for more than three decades. 
And so we have excellent safety data and very good efficacy data for a variety of orthopedic conditions. The problem with bone marrow is that as we age, the cell count diminishes significantly and um, less than 1% of the cells in the bone marrow are actually this MSC. So it's not a rich source of MSC, but it is also a rich source of platelets and other um, orthobiologics. For our older patients, I prefer to use adipose tissue. Most patients are not hesitant to have a little mini liposuction procedure. And we collect about four tablespoons of fat in the office. And this is very rich in MSCs. And, for, and we have more than 50 year, 15 years of safety data and 10 years of efficacy data in biologics. And we use this FDA compliant technique. And that's Dr. Yui on the left. He's, he's the man who discovered the adipose MSC. Dr. Kaplan discovered the bone marrow MSC. And Dr. Yui discovered the adipose MSC in 1999. And this is, a, this is the device that we use. It's called Lipogems. It was developed in Italy. And uh, it simply takes a liposuction sample and rinses and washes out the oil in the fat. And then we resize it and inject it into the patient. And uh, this is what this is actually what you had, Diane. And so those MSCs live in that little fat sample, and then they go and repair uh, the tendon when we inject them. This is a study that I published with uh, my colleagues. Um, this was an international study. So Dr. Gobi is a well-known orthopedic surgeon in Italy. Dr. Morell is a well-known orthopedic surgeon in Dubai, and Dr. Mountner, a colleague of mine in uh, at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. We published this paper where we studied uh, patients with knee osteoarthritis. Their average age was 70 years of age. They all had severe, uh, moderate to severe arthritis, and they were all trying to avoid knee replacement surgery. And so we performed this lipogems procedure on these patients, and we pooled our data, and we were able to show that a two-year follow-up, 88% of the patients were significantly improved, and 91% of them were able to avoid knee replacement. Uh, and this was at minimum two-year follow-up. We're continuing to follow up our data um, my longest patient uh, that, I, that I followed is six years. Uh, that's this gentleman. He's a retired firefighter. His name's Jim. Jim was actually the first in, in California and the third in the United States to receive this kind of treatment back in 2014. Uh, I had treated him for many years using cortisone and physical therapy and a variety of other treatments, and he just wasn't getting better. His knee arthritis was very bad. And I injected his knee, and I told him, please take it easy. Uh, he didn't. 20 days later, he sent me this picture of himself skiing. He said, I've been skiing in Whistler for a week. I feel great. And every week, I mean, every year he visits me uh, and tells me how great he's doing. So he's he's a real pioneer in this area. And I have him to thank for um, being willing to be a guinea pig. And we've now treated hundreds of patients just like Jim with very good results. Now, uh, Dr. Rogers, sir, just to interrupt, sorry to interrupt, but just to let you know, we've probably got about four minutes left. Well, I apologize for taking longer than expected. Um, oh, let me um, great. let me accelerate. I hope I hope you find this interesting, but I apologize it's taking so long. Um, oh. I want you to realize that these these treatments are um, FDA compliant because they are your cells. Um, these are this is not the same thing as stem cell therapy. So stem cell therapy is where you actually extract the cells, grow them in a lab, and increase their number. So we can get up to twenty million cells for a treatment. And this is where personalized stem cells comes in with these FDA approved clinical trials. So these are the, uh, uh, as you're aware, the FDA uh, approves every drug in your medicine cabinet. And so stem cell therapy is considered a drug because of the manufacturing process involved in making those, those biologic products. And we have to go through phase one, phase two, and phase three clinical trials, which typically will take 10 years and cost tens of millions of dollars to obtain a, a, an FDA approval. So um, we're moving rapidly in this direction to develop stem cell therapy. Um, currently, there are no FDA approved uh, stem cell therapies in orthopedics, even though we're using bone marrow and adipose tissue. Uh, these are not uh, considered to be uh, uh, stem cell therapies per se, although they, they're tissues that have stem cells in them. Uh, as you're aware, there, have been, uh, there are at least six companies in San Diego that pretend to do stem cell therapy, uh, and the FDA is very concerned. There's actually more than 300 clinics around the country, and the FDA has issued warnings uh, for patients to avoid these types of clinics that are claiming that they have FDA-approved stem cell therapy. It's just not, it's not reality. And typically, these are donor tissue products from umbilical cord, blood, or 
amniotic fluid. Uh, so I'm just encouraging everybody to avoid these. Um, is 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 problematic. Uh, these products are are generally uh, not only are they not FDA approved, but these products uh, have caused infections in patients. These products don't contain live cells, so it's really not even a cellular therapy. And there's no safety data and there's no efficacy data for these products. So just just please avoid them and tell your friends to avoid them as well. Uh, and I have a paper you can read uh, on our website about more about that. In the interest of time, I'll move to our phase one clinical trial. So I told you I'm a medical director for a company where we've, we've completed a phase one trial using true stem cells manufactured under uh, in an FDA inspected facility under uh, good manufacturing practices. Uh, here you see liposuction sample adipose tissue being processed. And then from that, we're able to generate this biologic product, which has 18 million viable cells in it. They're tested for sterility. And uh, again, this is only through our clinical trials that you can receive this treatment right now. The exciting thing about doing this is you can culture these cells and, and store them in the lab. So with one single liposuction procedure, you can potentially receive hundreds of treatments because these cells can stay in the freezer for decades and remain viable. And they can, they've been used for a variety of things, not just orthopedics, but also for heart disease and um, stroke and a variety of other things that have been studied. Uh, I told you this is our phase one study, uh, which we completed this year. And um, I'll give you the, I haven't published the details yet, so I can't give you the details, but I will tell you that we demonstrated very good safety and very good efficacy treating patients with knee arthritis using this new uh, protocol. And we're going to start our phase two study. So if anybody is a candidate and interested this summer, we'll start recruiting for uh, our phase two randomized controlled trial using stem cell therapy for knee osteoarthritis. And then finally, I'd like to just share with you, there's some good news about COVID. I know we're all sick of hearing about COVID, but thank God the vaccines are here. It's a miracle that the scientists were able to do this with such rapid time course. Uh, this time last year, um, I was spending uh, all my waking hours um, getting FDA approval for a stem cell research project. This project um, was picked up by Sorrento Therapeutics here in San Diego and they are conducting the, F, uh, the phase one FDA approved clinical trial using donor uh, adipose cells for the treatment of COVID. And they just this past week reported that their first nine patients have all done very well, no safety issues, and thank God they've all gone home to their families. So these are very sick patients intubated in the hospital who uh, are surviving uh, COVID as a result of this treatment. And I published a paper if you wanna read more uh, about that. So the future is very bright. Cell therapy is the future of my field with orthopedics, as well as many other areas of medicine. Um, and hopefully I'll come back and be able to share some more information about some of our future studies. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate this opportunity. And if you have any questions whatsoever, I'd be happy to answer them, or you can just email me. Um, that's my personal email there. You can just uh, send your questions to me. Thank you.